Welcome to the Ben and Lauren Show. I'm Ben. This is Lauren. It's Saturday night. Time for the Ben and Lauren Show again. The crickets are audible because the kids are in bed. I don't know. Can you hear the crickets? No, I mean, you know, you've heard the saying crickets. Oh. <laughs> it's so quiet that we can hear them. So it's another peaceful night. Got the windows open, fans on, crickets are chirping. I was in the office. It was a lot hotter out in there than... Well, it's about 81 degrees out here, so it, it must have been mid-80s in your office. It was 85 or 86. We don't turn the air conditioning on easily. It takes a lot for us. Well, part of it is the air conditioning only works in half of our house. Mm -hmm. So if we do turn it on, it tries very hard to cool the other half of our house. And so basically, we only turn it on if we're getting really desperate because we can't get any breeze. And Well, thankfully, our bedroom is the coolest room in the whole house. Actually, the bathroom. Well, yeah, our bedroom gets nice and cool. Although then I do feel a little guilty because the kids' room is still really hot. But well, we're on a mission right now to get another air conditioning unit for the other side of the house, so the girls will be nice and cool. Right, because eventually, once once we have to move boys into the boys' room, maybe there'll be more than one boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's really going to be warm in that side of the house. Yeah. So anyway. what what did we do this week? We did um, we didn't do chop night this Wednesday. It was a really quiet week. Yeah. Um, we mostly spent time at our house working on things here. That's usually what we do. It is usually what we do. We did go grocery shopping and we did go to farmer's market. So mm -hmm. we did food collection this week. We yep. worked in our garden. You did a lot of mulching. Yeah, finally got the mulch everywhere. We still have a fairly decent sized pile, but at least almost everything noticeable is mulched. Yeah. When you look at the landscaping. Still have a section underneath the trees. We've been cutting the tree back. Actually, we're getting rid of the peach trees, as we said we would do. We're doing it... Little by little. Little by little. As I get a chance in the evening, I've been cutting them down. You've also been cutting down a bush in the corner of the of the yard. Yeah, we've been planning to build the girls a playhouse for a while. But there's a big old thorn bush that's in the way, which we would like to get rid of the thorn bush anyway. So, was maybe about several times this week you've been out there just trimming away at it. Yeah, about four nights in a row. It mm -hmm. is a much bigger bush than I thought it was. And it's the thorns are really sharp. They will go straight through leather gloves, so I have to go kind of slowly and carefully. We'll be happy to get that thorn bush out of there. Yeah, every time we have to work in the end of the yard, it causes problems. So we're getting ready for another yard day tomorrow. Usually Sunday is our next yard day. It's my sister Catherine's birthday. She is going to be 19. Her birthday is easy to remember because she was born in the year 2000. <laughs> so every year that passes is another year she's older. And um, we were planning to go over there, but it sounds like eh, there might be some colds going on over there. So we'll have to see what happens tomorrow evening. We've got to check in. So we went to Farmer's Market. That was fun. It was, uh, oh yeah, I, I did a post on it. I got one of those big fancy drinks. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you spent $7 on uh, a drink. Yeah, <laughs> that was a lot. Because it had jackfruit in it and you wanted to try it. <laughs> jackfruit and a lychee. Well, the lychee, lychee fruit. Good. And a melon and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, at least it had a lot of fruit in it. <laughs> I would not normally spend $7 for a drink. But, you know, I, I showed a lot of enthusiasm, and they were excited. Everyone was all happy, excited. It just makes it easier to spend money, apparently. <laughs> I buy into the hype. Well, if you were going to buy something, at least that was decently good for you. Mm -hmm, I shared it with you. But now I want to try the orange one. The carrot one. <laughs> okay. Next time, maybe next Thursday. So, uh, yeah, we parked closer this time. It's hard to describe exactly how it works, but there's a big parking area, and we have to walk all the way through the parking area to get the actual farmer's market. It's kind of a hike. It is a walk whenever we go. So we decided to park over on the other side, which is, like, right next to the auditorium, right next to the farmer's market. It was a way, way, way easier. Yeah. We brought along butterflies to let go in the park, so we weren't <laughs> letting along letting them go in our yard. So now this Ben and Lauren show is unique because we had a request for more props. A little <laughs> shout out to <laughs> Sims50, who said, you need more props. So I said, okay, we got lots of props this time. Well, I can show you the butterflies for sure. Um, we have most of our caterpillars have gone, I think you are correct. I think it is chrysalis. They are in chrysalis. And uh, we have two that are left to finish growing and I have banned all newborns from the house, much to my children's chagrin. I was squashing them, but my two girls found out I was doing that. Now they're trying to rescue them before <laughs> I see them. Yeah, they don't want squished caterpillars. I squashed them when Abigail was around the other day, and you would have thought I killed an actual baby. 
The thing to remember is they she are the actually look on her face. But they are pests. I mean they'll eat our <laughs> they'll eat our herb garden right up. Swallowtails are not endangered. They are beautiful, but they're not endangered. And we have gotten so many caterpillars this year. It's just amazing. <laughs> we don't we don't spray Did with you anything. Count them? I've lost count. Last I counted, we had like 45 of them. Wow. But we've had them hatching and been letting them go, and I've got the tent full of them. So we've released about 10 of them, 15? A dozen, I think. 12? I've released a dozen. Some of them in local parks, some of them in our backyard. We have some butterflies right now, don't we? Uh, No, we don't have any that are butterflies. Um, It's neat when they come out because their wings are all kind of crumpled up. So you see them crawling around on your hand. This is our butterfly tent, and each one of those sticks you see there... Oh my! It has one, two, at three, least four, one chrysalis five, on six, it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's a dozen right in there. Well, some of the st- some of the sticks have two or more. One of the sticks actually has three. This one here. <laughs> I'll show the camera if I can show them. This stick here. What's interesting is has some of them three chrysalises on it. Some of them are green and some of them are brown. Well, some of them are new. I've been taking them out of the jars, and the new ones will probably turn brown. Uh, The ones that stay green are ones where they made their cocoon on Caterpillar. You can see a green one here. He's new. Probably by tomorrow he'll be brown. You can see it in the video. Yep, right there. There's a green one. Most of the others are brown just like the sticks. You can probably only see them because they're... Here, let's see if I can show you. Uh, They're sticking off the sides. There's a green one. Yeah. That green one is actually tied onto the stick because that one was dumb enough to make his... Uh, chrysalis on a parsley stalk which would wilt and drop them to the ground. We also have three on the ground in there and uh, that's because they made their chrysalises on the sides of the mason jar and the other caterpillars in the jar knocked them off. But you know so they'll be okay even if they're on the I floor. I suspect. And then they'll just hatch and these are two that are just growing. Move over see. a little bit this way. Uh, let's see if I can get them. There's one right there. And the other one is bigger, and he's in the middle there. I just barely see him. And they're a couple days away from being finished growing. And as you can see, we do not have parsley in this jar. I was feeding them all parsley, but our parsley plants are our parsley plants are a little bit decimated. And I'd like to actually eat some parsley. So <laughs> we found out they eat carrot tops. So they're eating some carrot tops from our garden since we have plenty of those. Now we had Abigail pull up one of our carrots, thinking there'd be a nice big root. The root's about this big, with this big green carrot top. Well, I had her pull that one because I kind of thought it was a dud. It was a dud. Was it was sure. on the edge of the hill and I could kind of tell it wasn't deep enough in. But you know, that was great food for our caterpillars. She's been asking me constantly, can we pull one and see how big it was? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, why don't you pull this one? <laughs> <laughs> and then she found out it was this long. Well, she's gotten some out of her box that are longer. I think yeah. that ju- that one actually got damaged when I was thinning the carrots, I think, and that's why it was all weird. Yeah. So <laughs> I We cut it up and ate it. You did? Yeah. You're not going to waste it. <laughs> it's only like an inch long. <laughs> <laughs> Tasted like a carrot. Tasted good. So, yeah. Well, it was only a bite. <laughs> I have to keep the kids. It turns out the kids are almost as bad as some of the uh, some of the critters. They eat all the green beans. <laughs> the green <laughs> beans. <laughs> I don't stop them. Like, quit picking the green beans. So what other props do we have? I was, gonna, I was thinking about telling the story about Heidi catching a nest of rabbits, too. Oh, yeah. It's a good story. Um, my... Our in-laws, my in-laws, Ben's parents, live next door, and they have a cat. And Heidi, I guess, began life as a feral cat. She was not, uh, she was not bred indoors, but she kind was kind of a barn cat. She was, she was owned by an older lady, and she became domesticated. But ever since she's been at mom and dad's house, she wants to go outside so badly, and so finally they started letting her out. So she's declawed in the front, but has her back nope, claws. She has all her. Oh, claws. she has all of her claws. She is fully, fully clawed. And I was a little annoyed about it at first because she used to use our sandbox like a litter box. But what happened this year in is garden. she really likes the paths in the garden. She doesn't like walking in the grass for whatever reason. She likes the paths in the garden, and she began patrolling our garden. So we'll see Heidi out the door while walking around our yard. She patrols the garden two or three times a day. She's a useful cat. And she has created a penchant for catching baby rabbits. <laughs> She is a thumbs up. She is a good hunter. Yeah. And she's not really hungry, so the problem is that she does catch the rabbits and try to take them next door to mom and dad's basement. 
I think they have one down there currently Dad is trying to catch. <laughs> but this week, in one day, she killed one and caught one, and we took the one away from her. Um, and I guess Mom and Dad took it out to Metro <laughs> Beach and let it go. Yeah, they took it out to the beach. I don't know that I would have kept it alive. To the but park. Anyway. We found a dead one. Yeah, she killed that one later the in the day. Basically had like a chunk taken out of it. Anyway, I don't have to describe it. My we kids were it. fascinated. They were gathered around this dead rabbit going, oh, look, the ants are eating it. Look at that piece. <laughs> the ants are eating it all up. They they really enjoy ants. Oh, the flies really like it. Yeah, and then they're like, can you turn it over when you put it in the <laughs> hole because they buried it so we can see if it's hurt on the other side? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> They're not... Uh, I don't think they're bloodthirsty exactly, no. but I think, thankfully, they're not all that squeamish. It's like when we found the mice. Yeah, we had mice get caught in a moth trap, baby mice. In the we went in the basement and something started smelling, so we took a look and there was a bunch of tails sticking out of the moth trap. We heard squeaking. Oh, that's right. They were still alive. Because a couple of the baby mice were still alive, but they were caught in the trap. They, they were, were just making, little babies. We caught five of them in one moth trap. We tried rescuing one of them. Well, I tried peeling them out of the trap because I... Once you get that sticky stuff, it's like the tar pits, you know? Yeah, it's the first It's the first animal that I think I've killed. And she did, too. Well... We won't describe how you did it. <laughs> but it was impressive. Let's put it that way. Well, I, I killed it because there was no way it was going to live. It's a mouse. It's a pest. If I let it go wandering around in the grass, it actually was sticking. You know, it would have stuck to the grass. And Heidi might have gotten a hold of it and gotten her yeah, mouth stuck no. full of glue. It was just... It was a mercy kill. Sometimes you got to take out the mouse. My kids wanted to watch that, too. I said no on no, that one. No, no. You don't have to see that part. <laughs> anyway, that was the story with Heidi and the rabbits. She's been, she's becoming an, an excellent asset to our garden. We've been having some good harvests. And uh, I would say our best harvest so far is our pickle plants. Uh, let me show you the pickle. This is the last, Ta-da! This is <laughs> the last couple days. I would say this is another nine or ten jars of pickles. We've gotten... One of my favorite things about the garden is uh, right outside of our window of our bedroom (laughs) is our pickle plant. So it's actually climbing up the wall, climbing up the screen. It might damage the screen. I've been checking the screen. It's okay so far. But we see these (laughs) giant leaves and these little pickles starting to form (laughs) right out our window. It's sending its little runners through the the screen and uh, curling through there and supporting the vine. But we have them on a trellis outside the window because that's an eastern exposure. And I separated the pickles out of the um, rest of the garden. Now, these are technically not pickles yet. I mean, they have to be actually pickled to become pickles. We call them pickles because they're pickling cucumbers. They're pickling cucumbers, but we call them pickles just because, look at that shape. It's like right out of a jar. I have to be really careful that they don't get too big or I can't get them into the jar. And they don't taste that good either when they get too big. Actually, the big ones have been tasting good. They've been getting enough nutrients and enough water. I have to be careful because if I don't give them the right amount of... You, they like very consistent watering. They like about the same amount of water at the same time of day every day. And if you don't give them that, the pickles start growing and they get curly. They look like this or they grow real it's big at nice the top. a nice close-up of that pickle. Look at that. Yep. It's beautiful. So we've been eating a lot of them and then I've been pickling them. So we have about a dozen jars and that's another nine. And I'm guessing that's going to be probably pretty good for what we need for the year, but... <laughs> Now, if only we can uh, harvest enough apples to make applesauce to that quantity. Well, I'd like to see our tomato plants producing like that because we use a lot of tomato sauce. Yeah, we do. So I think I may have cracked the code on the pickles. Now I need to move on to tomatoes. Yeah. One of the reasons we're taking down the peach trees is because we want our apple tree to produce. Yeah. The apple tree is more likely to produce than the peach trees. And we're taking down one of our two cherry trees, uh, the tart cherry. Yeah, we talked about that a That's couple right. weeks ago. I was just thinking about a good harvest. You know, what do we want our garden to produce? A and when harvest. It comes, and when it comes to trees, we're not getting peaches. Oh. We're not really getting cherries. So let's and stick with the apples. Yep, and probably we'll have room for some other beds back there. We'll ben wants back. to grow onions. That yeah, would be good. Garlic also. Yeah, I think there might be room. And also there's room for a composting bin if we... Because those are things that we use. Yeah. Garlic, onions. We don't really use peaches, although we enjoy them. I really enjoy them when we have we them. We went to Farmer's Mark and got a big bag full of peaches. So it's something we're yep. going to have to buy and not something we're going to grow. Yet. Yet. Maybe someday. Yet. 
We thought it'd be neat to have a pear tree, but those things are huge. Well, yeah, if I had room, we would definitely plant a pear tree because we've got six or seven that are growing in our subdivision. And you see them and they're just loaded. And obviously someone, it's obvious to me, they weren't really planted, expected to be gathering the fruit. One of them's in front of an apartment complex and that oh, yeah. tree has to be every bit of 50 feet and tall. And nobody picks any of the pears on it. It's like... We just want to grab a ladder and just say, we'll harvest know. these pears off for you. I don't know how you. we would harvest them. They are so high up. Yeah. And by the time they fall to the ground, they're usually not. You can find some decent ones on the ground. Well, maybe we should start checking the ground, take a walk over there every couple of days. Nobody's tending it. but it's Nobody wants the pears. But it's producing pears like crazy. And then there's another one on the corner of the people who are selling their house. They have a really big pear tree, and it's loaded. And when we do a walk around the neighborhood, there's an apple tree that's not being tended. <laughs> Yeah, that one's it's not. It's so sad. Fun. These fruit trees are not being tended. And they're huge because they're just somebody's backyard tree. And we nurse these little <laughs> trees in our backyard. <laughs> no, we can't get a single fruit <laughs> off any of ours. Might get one meanwhile, apple. Meanwhile, our neighbors are probably grumbling when they're running over all the fruit in the <laughs> lawnmower and end up with bees everywhere. <laughs> well, it smells like uh, apple cider vinegar. Yeah, the, it smells like cider vinegar over the house with the apple tree because they aren't even picking the apples up off the ground. I guess it's good fertilizer. <laughs> I don't know. It's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so what other props do we have? Well, we uh, we got a special order this week. We ordered um, somebody we know makes her own salves that she sells. The mermaid. And um, she has an Etsy store. Do you want to try some? <laughs> you going to put some on? This is basically her version of Icy Hot, but it's got much better ingredients in it, and it's very effective. It has... Um, has hot his cayenne peppers and menthol crystals in it and you can tell the cayenne's in it you don't want to get it in your eyes no. you don't want to get it on anywhere it doesn't belong so we bought some we found um she had some of her drawing salve she calls it and it has charcoal and things in it and that's really good for bug bites mm -hmm. we found that out when uh susanna got bit by a hornet or stung by a hornet during sukkot last year last and, year yeah. and um I, I think it was it may have been Zach and Jamie who gave us the, the salve, but it worked really well on her finger. And um, the lady who makes it had had a new baby and had not made more for a while, but she made more this summer, and then she had a sale on it. Mm -hmm. So we got some of that. Now, I know that uh, I think they're on the Dustin and Cassie show probably right now. Yeah, her husband is on is visiting Dustin and Cassie. Mm -hmm. um, so we were really thrilled to be able to get some from her. Um, she's, she also, while we were at Sukkot, Daniel was just starting to have trouble with the eczema on his feet. And she's like, you know, I have some salve I make for eczema. And at the time I hadn't made the connection. I knew who she was online, but I didn't make the connection to her in person. Yeah. I don't know how I missed the that. Same thing happened with me too. <laughs> I, I, because I didn't know her by the same name. Mm -hmm. So I basically said, oh, it's okay. Um, cause she, it, she was offering me some of hers that she had. I remember had. at some point at Sukkot saying, oh, you're the mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> which is a funny thing to say. But uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I said, well, you know, A&D ointment seems to be working pretty well on his feet. I really wish I could go back and eat those words. I really should have <laughs> taken her up on her offer and tried. You whatever. didn't know what she, what she was offering she you. She was offering me something pretty special, and I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I, she, you know, she had this, she had this three or four month old baby who was teething, and she, you know, she's having a lot of trouble with the, the baby and. I just felt like, no, I'm not going to bother her for, <laughs> for her ointment that she uses on her. I think I'm going to just do whatever we're doing. It's working fine. Well, since then. <laughs> yeah, now we know. <laughs> I wish we would have tried it out. For future so, reasons. Anyway, that was, that was kind of fun. We got, a, we got that package from her, and I was excited to get it. And yeah. uh, Ben's been using it. Oh, yeah. My, uh, my dad made something kind of special, too. Yep. Dad made pepper jelly. Made this from Baker Creek peppers. We've got nata pinos in there and sugar rush peach peppers, which are turn out to be fantastically spicy. He says mostly green peppers, but it's got some. Yeah, it smells good. I put some on crackers so we could taste them. Um, so Dad made that uh, this morning, I guess. And he you know what's, the, us over what's really nice about crackers is the noise it makes in a microphone. <laughs> wow, I didn't know what else to put them on. <laughs> It came out really good. You know, there are uh, YouTube channels where all they do is put microphones up and eat food and all that uh, sound that it mm. makes. Actually, 
it's really good this year. Dad makes good pepper jelly, but the two kinds of peppers to, uh, no, peppers together is really good. It's not too hot. Mm -mm. Not a pinos. We um, I actually did pull up one of our sugar rush peaches. It got black spot fungus, and I was gonna have to fight to save it. And it had a huge crop of peppers on it, so I harvested the peppers. But they are so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. Yeah. Um. Nothing like the ghost peppers. Papa Pepper did warn us that they might be a little spicy. They they're pretty spicy. I'm thinking sugar rush peach peppers. They're going to be sweet. It doesn't sound like it would be so hot. But they're very hot. They're well, very tasty. They do have a like a peach kind of an. Let me let me back flavor. that up. I say very hot, not very hot compared to Carolina Reapers no. and ghost peppers and that kind they of thing. They are definitely hotter than jalapenos. I would say they're. They might even be hotter than serranos. They're, they're somewhere yellow. around the Thai chili. Uh, now, we have banana peppers growing, too, right? Yeah, the banana peppers haven't done well. Dad's no. didn't do well. Ours didn't do well. The nata pinos are producing. I've got enough. I want to can some of those. <laughs> the nata pinos are nice because there's no spice. So you can put them on your tacos. You put them on your Our chips. kids don't mind them. You can put them on burgers. You can put right. them on anything. That came out really good, though, yeah. that pepper jelly. I actually like that batch Another a lot. One? Uh, now I'm going to crunch it in the microwave. <laughs> okay. Although they did get kind of soft waiting for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> we'll have to tell if Dad doesn't watch. We'll have to tell him we tried it. Salud. It was really good. They're really good. Mm -hmm. It's very. It's a surprising thing. Pepper jelly is very sweet, but yet it's got that kind of. It's very, very much flavored of pepper. So personally, I like it on cream cheese or something because the sweetness always throws me a bit for a loop. It's mm -hmm. like this shouldn't be sweet. <laughs> Should we like have sour cream in it or anyway? That's all of it. That is a good batch. I like the, I think Dad said he ended up putting a quarter cup of hot, of peach peppers and a quarter cup of jalapeno peppers, the nata peños, and then he put green pepper in it. I could definitely taste the um, nata peños. I could taste the, a little bit of the peach peppers, the spice. You can taste the spice. But not a whole lot. I wouldn't have picked that green pepper was in there though. It mostly tastes like green pepper. Well, it's good. <laughs> So that was, most of our week has revolved around our garden, so. It has. Um, I think we covered pretty much all the events of this week. Um, Seems like we're forgetting something. Yeah, we always remember things. I, I write things down before our show, and then after we're done, we're like, oh, we should have talked about that. Yeah, well, are. whatever it is. We did, uh, we did get a classic question this week. Yes, we did. We um, we went to your family's house mm -hmm. uh, Sunday, right? Yep. It was Sunday, and we were celebrating your was it uncle, aunt and uncle? My uh, they're actually my mom's aunt and uncle. Your mom's aunt and uncle. They've owned their own business for a number of years, and they sold it and retired. So it was a retirement party. Yes. And while we were there, your uncle was there. His name is <laughs> Steve. Yeah, Uncle Steve. And he just kind of blurted out out of nowhere. What did he say exactly? He says, are you how many kids are you going to have? Yeah, how many kids are you going to have? I think that was his exact words. I don't think he's seen us for two or three years. He may be, have just been shocked by the <laughs> number of small children running around that all ended up being ours. So if last time he saw us, we only had two or three children, suddenly going I to four, two. soon to be five. Right. <laughs> it's got to be a shock. I think he finally figured out about halfway through the evening that all the kids there he knows my sister has kids and i have kids i think he finally figured out that they all the ones that were there were mine because yeah he kids said there. he mentioned your sister's name and he was surprised that she wasn't there but yet her children were here and then that's it clicked it. in his mind it clicked oh those aren't those that's, aren't that's Leah's one children. family <laughs> right and i think that's when he said that and you know my first my impulse is are usually to say something usually pretty <laughs> n not snippy but smart aleck I, I did say something remember i said jacob had 12 sons i only have one i have 11 more to go <laughs> he didn't say anything after that well I, I i basically said well i know for sure we have five <laughs> i don't know what the answer is after that so we were talking about questions that we get about you know our family our decisions that we made some of the odder things we've done and that's we've had some positive comments before though right uh, i remember one lady at aldi was really happy yeah 
I've gotten the, the you know what causes that line. <laughs> How many kids are you going to have? Are you done now? Are you done now? All the classic kind of stuff. That's a popular one. Are you done yet? You know what causes that, right? No. <laughs> Why don't you describe it to me? <laughs> <laughs> In graphic detail. Uh, Be careful someone might. I really don't want to say that because you never know when someone might. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> Stupid question, stupid answer. We were talking about... How many children are we going to have? Well, we're not a planned parenthood kind of family, meaning we don't, I mean, there might be a certain amount of planning. There's certainly a space between children. We haven't really planned how long the space would be, though. Not particularly. The, we don't. The biggest amount of planning we've done is to say, don't think we're physically quite ready to have another one yet, meaning not back to normal enough. But. Yeah. It was never, there needs to be eight months, or there needs to be three years, or there needs to be... Well, seven is my favorite number. For a number of children, or how many months between children? Well, we're a family of seven now, so <laughs> we can sit on seven for a little while. So when people ask, how many people, like you go to a restaurant, and if we're all together, how many people? You say seven. <laughs> well, I know for sure we'll probably sit on seven for about a year. I think we should uh, invest in a bus. <laughs> well, I saw one for sale today for $7,900. An actual bus. It, it was in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> it, was a, it was a smart style bus. It had 14 seats. I'm just trying to imagine an actual bus parked in front of our house. <laughs> <coughs> and people would really start wondering how many children we have. I think the bus might be overkill for us at this point. But, you know, if we wanted to take a trip with our family and another family, we would need a bus of that size. Well, if we have seven people right now, that one had 14 seats. That's twice the bus we need. Well, think about it. Say uh, Kim's in town. There's Kim. And then there's their children. That's three. That's four. Plus Stephen, five. Plus mom and dad, seven. Plus mm -hmm. our family, seven. Okay. There's 14 right. seats. There you go. Well, so the, the question of how many children are you going to have, the answer is we really don't know. Yeah, no, we don't. It depends on... How as long we have? As many as God gives us. You know, whether I physically am able to keep having children, which so far there's no indication of any problem, but you know. Now this woman, you would never know that she's already had four children. <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> no, she thinks that, but no. Well, yeah, I started this pregnancy 30 pounds up, which I've never done before. I've always been back down to normal, so I feel just huge. But look how she's glowing. She just has this pregnant glow to her. No, that's called overheating. <laughs> it's called, is it 150 in here? <laughs> that's why you have the ceiling fan on and the windows open. Yeah, I know. So that, that is the answer. We figured there are some people who go into marriage saying we have to have as many children as we possibly can. There we some didn't really say that. I just said lots. And That's an undefined number. Then there's some people who go into marriage saying, we're only going to have three. That is true. And we're neither one of those families. When I married you, I said, I want to provide a house and I want to provide lots of children. Yes, you did. <laughs> what else did I say? I never said we were going to be fabulous, fabulously rich. I should have included that in the list. Well, you know, in order to have uh, provide a house and have lots of children, <laughs> it implies you got to have some resources. I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, I, you know, our, our answer is pretty vague. It, the answer comes out to, we haven't really just, we have not planned a size for our family. No, but we're not that kind of, we're not that kind of couple that plans a size. Not really. No. And if you were to ask me, what's the ideal size for your family? I don't think I could tell you. Yeah. I tell people though that our basement, we can always fit it to make a, turn it into like a dormitory. You know, make little cubicles <laughs> for, just put a bed, maybe a little bathroom in each one, little cubicles. Well, you wouldn't think, you know, a family of four, it doesn't sound huge. But I do have to admit there are days when people are running around and I'm thinking, where did all these people come from? We were watching pictures of Elena when she was really little, and then Susanna, she was really little, and Abigail. No, I don't think we saw Abigail. I don't have enough. There's no uh, record of Abigail. But I've got, I've got some bunch of Abigail yeah. pictures. And uh, it's funny because we know that it's coming again. we got another baby coming. And this time, Daniel's going to be meeting a new baby. 
when he was the new baby Sometimes not that long ago. it is kind of hard to believe that we would have five. Yeah. Again, if you would have asked me when I was younger, is five children a big family, I would have said no. It does feel like... <laughs> it feels it, like a big it family. It does feel big, though, I think partly because of how little they are. Makes it feel They're like all little at the people. same time. They're not spread out. Abigail is six and a half, and she's the oldest. And she doesn't always... Well... She's... She's getting, getting much more responsible, much more reliable. I think when the new baby comes, she's going to actually show a lot more responsibility. I think she's been showing a lot now. She's been taking care of Daniel a lot of times when he needs to She'll buckle that. him into the car and right. so put him in his seat and things like that. I wouldn't say... You know, from Daniel's perspective, Abigail probably looks very old. Probably. I mean, she's only six and a half, but she just, from his perspective, she probably looks very old. Now, my family, there's eight children. And the, the child who is six years younger than I am is the third child in the family. Right. So in Abigail's case, it's the fourth child in the family. So they're a little closer together in our family. So a family of eight. We're not that far off. No. With, a, with our fifth coming. Yeah, we, have, we would have three more. Wow. And I can probably have children likely for another ten years or so. Wow. It's highly likely we would have another three. So again, whenever God grants us is what it is it is what it is and we we make things work so far we always make things work we've made things work we haven't gotten to the point where we're doing dentist appointments and Uh, there's that (laughs) well people say children are expensive but a lot of the things that are expensive about children we don't do you know that's true i mean we take good care of them they do go to the dentist they, they do get the checkups. We have a pediatrician, you know. Uh, we have to pay for schooling. There is no, we're not sending them that away for true, school. out of pocket. But they're getting a good education already. I mean, they're getting... Yeah, Abigail's almost done with the math program. She's doing great. And they'll do fine. And they are very curious people. Yeah, they are rapidly developing curiosity. And Abigail does like to think. <laughs> she says she doesn't like to think, but she oh, does. Oh, yeah, we had a little... We had Tiff with her at dinner tonight. She gave me some sass for the first time. That's the first time she's ever really done that to me, I think. Yeah. I would say that's the first time I've heard her respond like that, like she did. Uh, she was quite surprised that I responded the way I did. Yeah. So she yeah. Bas- to, to fill in the, the blanks here, she basically talked back to her daddy for the first time. And it was of the matter of she doesn't like when daddy and mommy talk about things that she doesn't understand. Use words that she doesn't understand. And she has to sit there at dinner time and listen and listen while we're talking about stuff she doesn't understand. Now, I think the whole thing started because I offered a bit of a constructive criticism because both Abigail and Susanna were basically being very loud and obnoxious. And I said, the Sabbath would be much more peaceful if you speak at a normal level and don't go la, 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 la. <laughs> I said three voices all making that noise at the same time is not peaceful. And they knew it. So she criticized us, basically. Well, the Sabbath would be a lot nicer if you didn't sit around talking so much about stuff we don't understand. Yeah, that's when you said, that well, is not going to... No. That, that doesn't work here. And I said, practice. Practice listening to us and figure out what we're talking about. You know, if you don't know a word, just listen long enough, you'll get the gist. You know? She was just being snotty because I know she, was. she didn't like that they had to sit at the table that long. <laughs> they wanted to go outside and play. They wanted to go outside and swing on the swings. Anyway. So, uh, what was the word that she said that she figured out? Consequences. Oh, did she figure that word out? She, yeah, she said she figured out. She said, I didn't know what the word consequence means. I said, well, do you know what it means now? She goes, yes. I should have quizzed her on it. <laughs> well, I explained to her, you talked back to your daddy. Here's your consequence. <laughs> now you have consequences. <laughs> oh, boy. That actually goes into the Torah portion for this week, which it basically does. was how many chapters of teach your children well. So the Torah portion, I think, was Deuteronomy chapter 5 through chapter 7. And it has the famous Deuteronomy 6 passage with the Shema. You know, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all of your soul, and all your strength. And you shall talk about these commands as you sit at home and you walk along the road. Mm -hmm. When you lie down and when you get up, you should write them on the doorpost of your houses. Yep. Our observation was that this Torah portion talks a lot about teaching your children these things. 
and I thought that was very relevant to what we do. You know, it takes a, one of the words it says is, "You shall teach your children diligently." It does take diligence. And I'll tell you that word diligence. You really have to have diligence. You can't stop. And it has to be with every situation that you're doing. You're teaching not just this is how we do things, but this is God's way of doing things. You, right. you can't just pick up things in your own household and say, oh, this is how we do things. This is how it's supposed to be done. You have to actually be striving for and teaching what God wants you to do. We don't want to say we Turners do this. You know, Our right. family tradition is that. We want to say, no, there's a very specific reason why we do these things, and we want you to know why we're doing these things. Yeah. You know, we talked about it on the Sabbath today. We were talking about um, why do we keep the Sabbath. And one of the questions I asked is, is it a serious thing or a silly thing? And they, Abigail and Susanna both said it was a serious thing. Well, that came from something I said to your dad yesterday where I was, I was telling him that, we had come up with our little ceremony of welcoming in the Sabbath because we didn't want our children to just say, oh, yeah, it's this silly thing that we do, mm -hmm. keeping the Sabbath. We don't really know why we do it. We just do it. Right. So it has some gravity to it, some weight to it. And so they understand every week we're telling them over and over and over why we do what we do. Right. And I think they know. And it's not just because we Turners do. It's because... This is what God told us to do. Right. And it's transitioning from uh, six days of the week that are profane, and that's fine. That's their normal days. But you're entering into a holy day, set-apart day. Yeah. So we don't really do anything to close the Sabbath, other than the Ben and Lauren show. <laughs> well, I thought it really close the Sabbath because no, we do Sabbath that after, is over. We do it well well into yeah. the dark of the, of the evening. But that... I, that, that sums up the Torah portion was to teach your children diligently God's ways to teach what ways he commanded mm -hmm. to do it constantly and yeah. there's another component to it well also Abraham you have to look at it as God has done these things for you he freed right. you from you know bondage in Egypt he did he led you through the Red Sea because he was talking to the children of the people who actually did most of these things. Well, it was very personal. When you read through what what uh, what Moses is saying to the children of Israel, it is personal. And it starts with Moses pleaded with the Lord, begged the Lord. That he would be allowed into the promised land. That he would land. be allowed in the promised land. And God said, no, and don't speak of this matter anymore. There is still the issue of why Moses said, God was angry with me because of you. Israel. Because really, God was angry with Moses because Moses didn't do what God said to do. But they were in complete rebellion to against Moses. It's true. But they had been in complete rebellion before. Moses got angry at the children right. of Israel, and that's most likely why he struck the rock. Well, that's true. But that was still his fault, not theirs. He should have been able to not be angry and He'd done follow it so the, many other times. And did what God said. Right. So... so. So that completes the Torah portion. Anything else? Well, I think we're long enough for tonight. I think so. I'm trying not to yawn. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been a little more of a laid-back Ben and Lauren show. we got lots of props, though. So yep. Thumbs up for that. So We did that for Sims 50? That's right. So say good night, Lauren. Good night, Lauren. Good night, everyone. <laughs>